Hey guys, Randy Gage here. Welcome you to another episode of the Duplication Nation MLM podcast. A uh, couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, we're going to get back on a weekly schedule. Uh, I want to commit to you that we're going to put out a new show every Tuesday. I do an English version here on whatever channel you're listening or watching every week. And mi hermano Jaime Loquier hacía, hacía otro episodio en español cada semana. Uh, but that'll be in the Spanish shows. Uh, but we're putting them out every week. Um, we're just getting such demand for this. There's, uh, I'm so proud of who listens, who watches this. Um, this podcast has really become the must listen, must watch uh, tool for the top leaders in the profession. I can tell you anybody who is anybody who makes at least $25,000 or euros a month, $100,000 a month, $200,000 a month, they listen to this show. Uh, because it's the long form, big kid content, the stuff you don't find anywhere else. Um, there's a lot of great social media stuff out there and brief little inspiring things. And there's a place for that. But we just felt like, hey, there is a place for long form, serious, in-depth content. And that's what started this podcast. And of course, Frequently, I do a chopping it up series where I uh, have a guest on and we chop it up about stuff. And then some weeks I'm going to do the solo shows like this, just me and you having a conversation. Um, but the demand, uh, and, and it's tough to schedule them, I'll be honest with you. But that's the thing I've heard the most over the last couple of months is, oh man, you got to do more shows. We don't want to wait two weeks or three weeks for a new episode. Um, so we're committed to doing this and getting them out there. So every Tuesday, look for a new episode and just subscribe, whatever uh, podcast platform you're listening to, or I turn on the camera and I put it up on the Duplication Nation MLM YouTube channel. Uh, so topic this month is a fun one. Um, how you go from that one comma in your income to two comma, which simply means you're earning at least a million dollars a year. And there's about nine areas that I think really differentiate the people who make less than a million dollars versus the people who earn more than a million dollars a year. So that's what I break down in this episode. Uh, just so you know, this was originally recorded for the mastermind event in Turkey. Um, they were running behind schedule. They couldn't get it in in the leadership session. Um, so I don't want you to have to wait for it. We're broadcasting it here now for you guys who are podcast subscribers. And then I believe the mastermind event is going to include it in their live stream event that they're doing in a couple of months. Uh, but I don't know. That's up to them. So uh, get ready, dive into it, and that training will be next. See you there. Hey, you need to be in the club. The two comma club. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, fun topic. Title of this session would be how to join the two comma club which means you have an income with two commas in it, meaning you're making at least a million dollars a year. Um, but no, this session isn't really about how to make a million dollars a year. It's about how to become the greatest leader you can become and how to empower your team in extraordinary ways. Uh, as a result, I do... Um, uh, some of you know, I uh, run a site called duplicationnation.com with Jaime Lokier. We do an event each year, uh, kind of would be the, uh, the Latin America version of this event, the mastermind event, but for Spanish speaking people. And we just had that a few weeks ago. And right before the event, uh, we had a couple of meetings before then. 
Jaime has a high level coaching program, people who make six figures a year in the business. And so he was having a coffee with them and he invited me to join them. So I got to hang out with them for a while. It was a cool time. And, and then at lunch, we had a session for our Prodigy Council, which is a mentoring program that Jaime and I do. And those people are two comma people, right? They, they're company founders, owners, presidents, um, distributors with 50,000 people, people who make million dollar million euro plus a year. And I was kind of reflecting on what's the uh, the difference between those two groups. What, how does someone get from the six figure group to the million group? Uh, and that's the session I want to share with you today. Uh, I'm going to start with an apology. I'm so sorry. I'm not there with you in the room. Uh, I have been looking forward to this for months. I have a very expensive plane ticket I bought, which was non-refundable to be there. Uh, unfortunately, I have a medical issue that I just have to handle. Uh, it involved even a, a short but very intense trip to the hospital. And I'm on a, a, a new medication protocol that... Um, uh, hope seems to be improving, but it's not this the place where I could say, okay, now I'm I can just jump and do a 15 hour flight and go over to Turkey. I'm not there, so I put together this uh, presentation with my heart and soul. How I can help you get the biggest bang, the greatest return on your investment for the time you guys are there in in Antalya. So uh, what I've come up with is nine areas that I'm going to challenge you to think about. And I believe these nine thought experiments, that some of them are principles, some of them might be better described as a philosophy. Others would be specific strategies that uh, involve that you would implement um, to create that kind of result to become an, an empowering leader with a huge team and producing a million dollar plus income. Um, and again, it's not about the money. It's about the impact that you have on the world because I'm a prosperity guy. And I believe when you are helping add value and solve problems, you, the universe will reward you with good. And the more value you add, the higher degree of difficult of problems that you solve, the greater wealth the universe is going to send your way. So let's break down these nine areas for you to do critical thinking on. Um, here's number one. Your prime directive is protecting your team. Um Sci-fi fans will know Prime Directive uh, comes from the Star Trek uh, television series and movies. Um, Prime Directive seeing meaning like the one underlying foundation that everything is built on. And that's the case for your profession that you and I do is protecting our teams. Um, you've got to protect them with a true meritocracy. So people, they have to know they have a shot at team leadership. They have a fair shot at the compensation plan, at the higher ranks, because it's driven by their actions, by their results, that it's a meritocracy not done with favoritism because somebody was your BFF in high school or they used to be the guitar player in your band, so they get favored treatment. You have to have a safe environment from sexism, prejudice, bullying, uh, all of those things. Uh, if you ask me what I'm most proud about in terms of my accomplishments in this business, I would tell you it's the strength of my team. And no one, I have an event and I got thousands of people there from my team. There are Muslim people and Jewish people and Christian people and Buddhist people and people of no faith all side by side together in a shared vision. I have devoutly religious people 
who are breaking bread with LGBTQ people. Um, and we have um, non-judgmental uh, shared focus and vision and everybody is safe to be themselves. You've got to do that for your team. Uh, you've got to big foot the company if needed. Uh, sometimes uh, my the companies I have worked with would tell you sometimes I'm not the guy they favorite guy they want to see because I'm jumping on a plane and I'm flying into corporate headquarters and pounding on the desk to demand a change because that there's some policy or some action the company's taken, which is threatening the security of my team. And I've got to stand up for them. And uh, somebody who makes 80 euros a month doesn't have a voice in corporate headquarters like I do if I'm the number one income earner in the world. So I have to speak for those people. You have to speak for those people in your team. Uh, you have to have the death penalty for terrorists. And by terrorists, uh, if you haven't read my books, when I talk about terrorists, I'm talking about the people who manipulate the back offices of their people and their team. Uh, they try to move line. They'll tell someone, hey, why don't you um, resign under this distributorship? And then you could join my team under your spouse's ID number or they're stealing candidates uh, from other people at an opportunity presentation. Those people are terrorists and they, they threaten the sanctity of the genealogy. They threaten the sanctity of the, the actual integrity of the organization. And sometimes you have to remove them. And I'm not afraid to do that when I feel somebody is detrimental to the security and health of the team or the company as a whole, I'm going to be the first one telling the corporate people, you've got to terminate that person. Your system, number two, your system is based upon first principles. Uh, if you're not familiar with the term, it's actually a concept uh, from Aristotle, spoke of this a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. A uh, first principle is a principle that could be broken down no further, right? So it is um, the basis with, with, with which other things are built on. So, for instance, we all operate under the first principles of the laws of physics. Um, gravity is a law of physics. If you inhabit this earth, there is a, a degree of gravity and you can't ignore it. You can't pretend it's not there. You can pretend it's not there, but it's still going to be there, right? So we have to follow those uh, first principles to become a two-comma person. Um, as an example, the formula for duplication. Uh, I spent years refining this, and I'm still refining it uh, to this day. But I spent years refining, okay, what can I, how can I break down duplication? to its simplest formula. And where I'm at at this exact moment is lead a large group of people to do simple, repetitive actions over a sustained period of time. Three parts to that, right? You need a large group. You can't do it with one or two people. You won't produce duplication. You won't have enough traction. Um, it's got to be simple, repetitive action. If you think, okay, I've taken uh, three years of neuro-linguistic programming training, and I know how to manipulate humans to act, and I know all of the psychological dynamics that can close people in a sale, great, they'll work for you, but they won't duplicate. And of course, it has to be a sustained period of time. Because even if you did the first two things perfectly, but you only did them for three, four weeks, and then you disappeared for two months, your duplication is going to collapse. It has to be a sustained period of time. So you'll notice all the people in the two comma club, they operate with first principles or they don't stay in the club. 
Um, there's more, but I'm not going to talk about them now. I'm actually, uh, I have a second session that we're going to be together this weekend uh, where I'm going to talk about creating a recruiting master plan for you. And um, I want to talk more about them then. So let's jump into number three. Your primary investment is in leadership. People, to grow the team, you have to grow the leaders. Success is not determined by how many people follow you. Your success is going to come from the strength of your leadership team. Let's suppose you're supposed to do a big training at the company convention for 20,000 people and you can't be there. Do you have someone who can step in, fill that role for you? Do you have the bench, the strength of leadership? That's what we're talking about. So you have to make leadership the number one thing that you invest in. The first person you lead, by the way, is yourself. So what does that mean in terms of investment? The first leadership investments you should make are in yourself. Having coaching or mentoring, going to events, uh, taking self-development books, courses, uh, training, you know, investing in you. Because if you don't invest in yourself, you're a pretty bad investment for anyone else. And then after you invest, only after you invest in your own leadership, then you should invest in the leadership of the members of your team. Um, like long distance groups. You go in the back office, you see where you have kind of a spark of activity and like, hey, what would happen if I got on a plane or I got on a train and I went there and I spent three days investing in that group? Could I get some more leaders coming up through the organization? Number four will be familiar to many of you who follow my work. You must transform hope into belief. Let me go really deeper in this and give you a million dollar tip. You have to kill unwarranted fear. And here's what I mean by this. Um, there are some bad premises, so some bad assumptions in our space. You will run into a lot of mid-level leaders who say, the problem is people are lazy. The problem is people aren't willing to do the same thing I did. Um, the problem is people aren't willing to pay the price. And I'm going to say that's a bad premise. It's a terrible belief. It's a belief that doesn't serve you. I believe that the better belief is, hey, when my people are not working, when they're not willing to do the work, the problem is on me as a leader. I have failed my job as a leader somehow because here's what I believe in my heart of hearts. I believe when you make that presentation and you get to the end and they take out their credit card and buy a kit and place their activation order, I believe not only do they want success, but 99% of them are willing to do the work that's required for that success. But you have to show them how to do it. You have to create a pathway for them. You have to give them the guidance and the nurturing so that they don't procrastinate and they don't create unwarranted fear. Just, oh my God, what if I call all my friends and nobody joins and they're all going to think I'm stupid? What if I join and I fail, then uh, everyone will know, I'm, you know, I'm a failure for life. My, you know, everything is over for my career. That's unwarranted belief. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, unwarranted fears because they just don't have confidence in what they need to do. The reason why your people are not calling more candidates is because they don't know how to do it confidently and effectively. Confidently and effectively. That's on you and me. That's on us as leaders. When you have someone in your team say, I have talked to everyone I know. There's no one else to call. 
that's not a their failure. That's you and me. That's our failure because we didn't teach them the skill of how to meet people. We didn't enable them, empower them to have confidence in how to meet people. That's on us as leaders. They have unwarranted fear because they don't have the skill sets. So when, when someone on your team says, I called 18 people and none of them watched the video, that's not their failure. That's our failure because we didn't teach them how to make invitations in a compelling way. We have to do two things here. We have to build out the infrastructure. The, the, you know, the system has to be there. The process has to be there. If you haven't read my direct selling success book, put that on your action list, action steps. And I don't mean just your notes, right? I know there's a bunch of people in the auditorium taking notes right now. I love that. But you need another page all the way at the back that isn't notes in general. It's action steps. The things you're going to do the next 30 days when you walk out of this auditorium. Right. So if you haven't read Direct Selling Success, read it. Put that on your action step thing. Right. So you know how to build out the infrastructure and then you know what are the skill sets to train people. Because when you teach them how to do the skill sets so they can do them confidently and effectively, 99% of them are going to do them. And if they do them, they will have success. All right. One, two, three, four. We're on number five. Oof. All right. This is a big one, guys. You have a responsibility to be an empowering role model. Now, if you're not willing to do this, stop now. Get out of the business. I'm sure you've seen the TV interviews. There'll be some footballer or basketball player, and they're doing some crazy stuff. And uh, some reporter will say, well, don't you think you're setting a bad example for the kids? And they say, I'm not a role model. I get paid to pay to get touchdowns or I get paid to score goals. Nobody should take me as a role model. OK, they can get away with that crap. You can't. If you're in this profession and you want to lead a team, you have to be and be willing to pay the price, to do the dues, to take the actions, to be an empowering role model. Um, so what does that look like? Well, number one, you got to be able to tell your success story in a way that empowers others. You may think when you reach that incredible top rank and make that big bonus check and they ask you to speak at the convention, that that's your reward to tell your story. No, it's not. Your reward is the bonus check and the pin and the, put your face on the website. The reason we ask you to speak at the convention is we want you to tell your story in a way that inspires and educates the people in the audience how they can produce the same results. So you got to find a way to do that. Otherwise, you're just beating your chest. You might as well just spray paint your name on the moon. Our job as empowering leaders is to take our failures and our successes and share them with our team members in a way that can empower their progress towards success. It means operating with integrity. Um, you've got to be, your recruiting can't be about crazy disease claims in a health company. It can't be about exaggerating and lying about incomes, testimonials. It has to be legitimate. And, and by the way, that stuff just is so ineffective today. Uh, I cut my teeth in this industry. And today. Well, all we did is we showed pictures of Lambos and stacks of cash and bimbos in bikinis on super yachts. <laughs> that 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 song ain't singing today. OK, um, the song that's singing today is getting out of debt, 
empowering people, becoming social entrepreneurs. Um, that's the, you know, your, your recruiting needs to be with total integrity. And every part of your organization is you've got to have impeccable integrity that you're not one of those people stealing candidates or prospects or cutting corners or doing stuff that's going to uh, cause regulatory issues. You've got to be impeccable with your word. you got to run a well-managed distributorship. You should have a viable customer base. You should still be enrolling. You should have multiple lines chasing you. You should be working down in depth. Um, that's the kind of empowering uh, role model you need to be. And let me give you the last one. This might shock some of you guys. Uh, you owe it to your team to get out of debt and live a dream lifestyle. You are morally obligated. It's a moral imperative that you become debt-free, that you become successful, that you become financially free, and you're living a lifestyle that you dreamed of. Because that's what this is about. That's what gives you the privilege of the platform is because this isn't just abstract theories, right? For those gurus who teach seminars, they can do that crap, all right? Not you. You're an actual field leader. You have a team. You have people that look up to you. You have to be the role model and do this the right way and show them what's at the, uh, you know, further along the journey. Uh, number six, you must be more monk than superhero. <laughs> oh, let me say this with all the love in the world, but let me really, really emphasize this. Chill on your personal branding. We have so many uh, gurus who don't actually do the business or they don't do it successfully, but they're teaching seminars and running coaching programs. And they're telling everybody how to build their personal brand. And everybody should have a podcast and everybody should write a book and everybody should. Uh, and these people, they stop building their business. They go out and they become PR machines, build their brand, and they kill their duplication. They feed their ego, but they kill their duplication. And they they do the exact opposite of the last thing we talked about because they don't model the behavior that their team needs to see. They model anti-duplication behavior. When you build yourself into a super brand, a superhero, you suck all the oxygen out of the room and you don't have more leaders develop. Make the team the superhero. Make this system the superhero. And really, please, please, please get this. Stop trying to build people's belief in you. Start building their belief in themselves. All right, number seven, number eight. I'm going to marry these two together. Number seven, you create true duplication with infrastructure. What does that mean? It's, it means you have a, things like a standardized presentation. You have a standardized new member orientation that people go through. And it's not just you doing it. In other words, there's a booklet, a workbook, or a video, or an online you know, Google Doc that takes people through the thing. There's a tool. And then there's things like a ladder of escalation in the event structure. So there is formats for one-on-one -on -one and two-on-one -on -one presentations with flip charts. And there's a format for uh, slides for a, uh, 
a small Zoom meeting or a home meeting. There's a format for bigger meetings. There's leadership academies. So there's this hierarchy of events that you bring candidates through. That's all infrastructure stuff, right? That's what needs to be in place for us as leaders. We need to put that infrastructure in place for our team. And then number eight is you protect true duplication with process. So what's process? Well, the candidate pathway would be process, right? What is the first thing we've got to do with any candidate? We've got to pre-qualify them. We need to know, are they a candidate or are they not a candidate? Once we ascertain, and by that, how would we do that? Well, you could use qualifying questions. You could use a tool like an intrigue video, a two or three minute, what we call sizzle video or intrigue video. Uh, or you could do a mass market tool, like a booklet that you could leave in uh, seat pockets on an airplane, or you could leave 10 of them when you went to the chiropractor's office. And they're basically a lead generation tool for the mass market, people that you don't even know, or you might never see otherwise. So it pre-qualifies them. So that's the first step, right? So we have the first stage or step in the candidate pathway is we've got to pre-qualify the candidate to see if they are a candidate. And then we've got to send them down a pathway. There should be one pathway for people who are interested in becoming customers. And there should be another pathway for people who are interested in becoming builders. And at each stage, there is an action to take and a tool to use. Um, and that leads us to the other part of this process, which is the principle of external source tools. Uh, meaning that um, I'm going to give you a real world example of it. And I have some evidence in the room right now. <laughs> a couple of days ago, I did a leadership training for the top dozen leaders in a company I work with who are in that room right now. And so there's like 12 of them and it's a health and wellness company. And I told them, do you realize I'm probably the only person in this Zoom room here who's not a doctor or a medical professional? <laughs> and they laughed and I laughed because we all know it's true, right? But here's the thing. And so what I have to teach them is, how to not let their experience and their expertise work against them. Because every one of those people could give a six hour seminar on why the human body would benefit from their products. And they will sell tons and tons and tons of products but nobody will join their team as a builder, or if they do, they'll never be able to duplicate. So uh, it's ironic, but I've pretty much always worked in health and wellness companies. And if I take this example from a couple of days ago, so that I had a dozen of the highest earning people in the company in that room, and I've made more money than any one of them, and arguably, I think it's true, maybe not, but I think it's true. I probably made more money than all of them in health and wellness companies with my bonus checks versus their bonus checks, even though they're all medical professionals. Why? Because their medical professional actually works against them. Uh, one of the jokes I make with the, you know, the client companies that I work with is that, hey, if I build your system right, uh, a drunken orangutan should be able to reach the third or fourth level of your compensation plan because we're going to make this, this process, this system, these tools so simple that they're point and grunt. <laughs> so we can give that uh, orangutan the flip chart and he can go, ooh, and flip the page. Ooh, ooh, and then flip the page, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> right? And he might break or she might break the third rank or the fourth rank because the tool 
is so effective that the people looking at the tool don't even think about the fact that they're talking with a drunk orangutan. They're saying, I could earn a bonus car like that? I could win a cruise around the world? I can get out of debt, create residual income, provide security for my family? That's what I mean by the process. So number seven, you create true duplication with infrastructure. Number eight, you protect true duplication with process. All right, the ninth thing, I saved it to the end because uh, I really want to tie it together with this. You must build a dream bigger than the team. The people who become multi-million dollar producers, million dollar plus income earners, it, it doesn't really matter how big your bonus check gets. You can literally be making a $500,000 a month or 500,000 euro a month bonus check and still be a grinder and have no duplication in your team. And I know people at very high levels of what, many would consider a success in our profession that I wouldn't trade my lifestyle for theirs for a second because they're total grinders. And they have so many people, they just keep throwing people into the boat every day to try to replace the people who are jumping out of the boat on the other side. You don't want that for yourself, I promise you. You want to empower your team. You want to create true duplication. And even just, you know, showing your, your Rolls Royce or your Bentley and your $200,000 a month bonus check, it's not going to keep people in there. It's just not. Uh, at our core level, inherently, all human beings we desperately want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. It's why people join gangs. It's why they join cults. It's why they join religions. It's why they join tribes and movements. They want to be part of something bigger than themselves. And our job, if we really do this right, that's what we're going to create. We, we know it's got to be about more than the money. It's got to be about the movement. What are we doing that's going to make a difference? What are we doing that makes a difference for the people on our 50th level and our 100th level and our 200th level? What, what, what do your products or services do to enhance people's lives, to make them better? What does the business opportunity we offer do for people who desperately need it. The world is in a tough, tough place right now, my friends. They, the world desperately needs what we have to offer. And we're not going to help the, the most people talking about bonus checks. We've got to talk about what it's really about. I think our job as leaders, what we've got to do is we empower people to become the highest possible version of themselves. What I told my, the, my friends there in Mexico City, the, the first group that I had coffee with and then my prodigy council, you know, what did I think the difference? One is everybody in the, the prodigy council, they at some point took that big leap of faith. They made a big jump and they made an investment in themselves. And the second thing is everyone in that group is just crazy enough to believe they can actually change the world. That they know that just because they were here on this earth, they altered the trajectory of the universe, even if it's just by a quarter of a millimeter. I can, you know, I think of my my friend Mary, who was 
on welfare, living in her friend's basement for free, trying to raise her kids, who built a bonus check of $30,000 a month. And man, $30,000 a month seems amazing, but it isn't about the 30,000. It's about what she showed her kids, the model she set of building freedom and security for them. I had a guy come to my event in, 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 in Peru who rode in the back of a chicken truck over the mountains from Colombia, back with the chickens in the back of a pickup. I did an event in Trujillo and one of my people came by mule. Never lose sight of how important what we're doing is. Yeah, we get those $50,000 a month checks, those two comma incomes, but never lose sight of the fact that for 99% of the world, if you could show them how to build a three or 400 euro a month income, you will transform their life. Somebody in Ecuador who makes 400 US dollars a month, somebody in Singapore who makes $650 a month, people all over the world with $1,000 a month. We transform lives. We are part of something bigger than ourselves. Um, we've got to challenge our people. Don't pander to them, challenge to them and, and never lose sight of that bigger picture. And that's why, that's what I want to share with you uh, is um, I, I put this session together because I really want you in the club. I want you not just in the club, but I want you to bring lots and lots and lots and lots of people into the two comma club with us. Not just because they're going to make a two comma income, but because they're going to become along the way, the greatest gift they're going to get is becoming the highest possible version of themselves. That's what I'm challenging you to do. That's what we get to do. I'll see you a little later in the event. I got to be back with one more session and I'm looking forward to it then. Peace.